After watching the original Dragon Ball, I have many things that I would like to discuss. OG Dragon Ball is such an important and vital part of the story that continues to get overlooked. Hello, my name is Bugsy and today I will be discussing how OG Dragon Ball is severely overlooked and why you should watch it if you haven't. The introduction of Goku, the Z Fighters, the fights, and quite frankly, the vibes. When Akira Toriyama passed away, I was hit with a major depression and decided it was time to watch OG Dragon Ball entirely. Of course, I have seen many different clips from the anime but did not watch it from episode 1 all the way to episode 132. Once I started watching OG Dragon Ball, I was unable to stop watching it. The humor, animation, fights, and the journey was the fresh air that I needed to slowly get out of my depression. Enough of the spoilers, sit back, relax, grab your snacks, and let's discuss how OG Dragon Ball is underrated, and also why it's perfect. The origin story of Goku was so nice because it gives a clear explanation of his character. The short, big-haired, monkey-tailed little boy with the four-star ball. He wanders around the world and does what any kid in the wild would do. The audience does not know who this little boy is or why he has a tail. Once Bulma sees Goku and empties the Uzi on him, it caused me to drop my jaw. I was not expecting to see a 16 year old girl just empty the clip on this little boy. Now the crazy part is how Goku did not get damaged by the bullets and just says, hey, that hurts. Why did you do that? Bulma is just as shocked as all of us are and she then notices that Goku is not a threat at all and figures out that he has the Dragon Ball she is looking for. In a separate video, I want to discuss how Bulma is one of the or the most important character in the entire franchise, excluding Goku of course. Let me know in the comments down below if you would like a character analysis on Bulma. Once we see the introduction of Goku and Bulma, this is where the adventure starts. Bulma convinces Goku to help her with her journey of finding the Dragon Balls to make any wish that she wants. Of course, she wants to wish for a boyfriend. Also, let me talk about how out of pocket OG Dragon Ball is, which is one of the main reasons why I think it is peak. Bulma was showing off her yams and the cheeks to all the cats when she was not able to convince them with reason. Launch and Bulma were constantly shooting Uzis and pistols at the cast whenever they would do something perverted or make them mad. I kind of wish Toriyama brought back Launch and Dragon Ball Z, but we know that he completely forgot that she existed. One of the best moments of OG Dragon Ball is when Goku meets Master Roshi, Turtle, and Krillin. This is where the journey starts to move at a faster pace, but also a pace that many people who watch Dragon Ball Z would enjoy. The training arc with Goku and Krillin and Roshi is a masterpiece. Roshi trained them regarding strengthening their physical and mental strength. Goku and Krillin have to go on runs with 50, then 100 pound turtle shells, carrying milk to the people up mountains, working construction, and even swimming in shark infested lakes. Also, Roshi had given them an impossible task, which was to move a entire boulder, which Krillin and Goku were able to do. Nothing was focused on techniques, beams, or even key blasts, just pure training, which I think is such an amazing change of pace from what we do see in Dragon Ball Z or even Dragon Ball Super. Seeing how Master Roshi trained the boys and how you saw the gradual improvement was amazing. Roshi says the line, move well, study well, play well, eat well, rest well. That is the turtle hermit master way. And I believe this line is extremely important. Roshi stresses the importance of working hard, but also to relax, eat, and have fun. Typically, in martial arts, the ideology of resting or even having fun is typically looked down upon. In fact, the hustling methodology, which denies such teachings from Roshi. We see Goku teach the same methodology to Gohan during the Cell Saga. I believe this is also the reason why Gohan and Goku were significantly stronger than Vegeta and Trunks during the training arc of the Cell Saga. Most importantly, Roshi's life lessons are applicable in real life. Many people from teenagers to adults typically work hard and never take time to relax or enjoy themselves, which is a reason why many of us would never reach our full potential. And this is the reason why many of us are quite unhappy in life and we seem to be in this cycle of life to where we continue to work hard, we see some results or we don't see results fast enough in which we get discouraged and we give up on our dreams. We see this also in OG Dragon Ball when Goku and Krillin question Master Roshi and say, hey, why are we moving these rocks? When are we going to learn fighting techniques? And they could not see the bigger picture, which was you have to strengthen your mind and your body. Then when you want to do some of these extra tasks that they're wanting to do, then you'll be able to do it with extreme ease. One of the coolest moments in OG Dragon Ball is when we see Goku learn the Kamehameha. Not only did he figure it out within 15 minutes, he did it with minor difficulty. The foreshadowing of Goku's natural ability to learn martial arts or even techniques was done brilliant, brilliantly. Great job, Toriyama. Tying his back with Dragon Ball Z, Goku quickly learned how to use Kaioken, instant transmission, key blast, and even how to fly. This is due to his ability to learn things very quickly. Goku does not boast or brag about what he can do. He simply does it when he needs to. Goku could have bragged and boasted about it during the Red Ribbon Army arc. Goku took on the strongest army and with ease. In fact, Goku defeated some of the strongest enemies during OG Dragon Ball. Enough glazing on Goku's talents, let's continue discussing how OG Dragon Ball changed anime. OG Dragon Ball was a predecessor to the tournament arcs. Toriyama did an excellent job with tournament arcs by not making them predictable or overly serious. There are many fun 
funny, shocking, and energetic moment. The 21st World Martial Art Tournament is one for the books. We see the training that Goku and Krillin participated in worked quite well. The final fight between Goku versus Jackie Chun, aka Master Roshi, foreshadowed how Goku was going to surpass Roshi and become the face of the Turtle Hermit School. The 22nd Budokai Tenkaichi Tournament is honestly my favorite out of all the tournaments. We're introduced to Krang and his pupils being Chatsu and Tien. Tien being the antagonist and truly having a dark persona was something I had no clue about. Toriyama really did cope with these characters in the anime. It is also very nice seeing Goku having some struggles against antagonists who are just as strong. Tien using his Kyokoho or Tribe Beam was fascinating. Also learning how every time Tien would use his Tribe Beam, it would take away a little bit of his life force. The Kyokoho being such a powerful move with powerful consequences if overused is fantastic. This is one of the minor details that make Dragon Ball incredible. Time and time, we see characters overuse moves and nothing bad happens to them. Even if these moves are extremely powerful, with powerful techniques should come powerful consequences. The humor between the tournament is also spot on. One of my favorite moments in the anime in, and manga is Chatsu versus Krillin. We see Krillin struggling against Chatsu who has the ability to fly and use the Dota on Ray. Krillin decides to insult Chatsu's intelligence and starts doing math against him, something very childish yet written in such a funny manner. Chatsu not being able to do 3 plus 4 is hilarious given Chatsu is a grown ass man, which I think a lot of people forget is that Chatsu is like 40 something years old in OG Dragon Ball. He is not a little kid. He is a grown ass man that should be paying bills and taxes and should not be living with Tien. But again, that's besides the point. There are many moments that I will continue to mention, but I hate to spoil the people who have not seen it yet. The 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament is also very good, especially with the introduction of Piccolo Jr. I almost forgot to mention the emotion in Dragon Ball. The emotion in Dragon Ball is on par with Dragon Ball Z. I'm sure there are many moments in Dragon Ball Z that cause a happy, sad, or angry emotion. OG Dragon Ball also does that very way. An example being when Krillin dies. I forgot that Krillin died in Dragon Ball and seeing how angry Goku gets over Krillin dying was stunning. We see the same reaction in Dragon Ball Z when Krillin is indeed killed by Frieza. We see how angry Goku gets, which of course leads to him turning into the legendary Super Saiyan. As a viewer, you can feel the rage that Goku is feeling, seeing how he acts on emotion and not logic. He decides to find a person who killed him and settle the score. Obviously, it does not go the way he wants it to go. Obviously, we see him get whooped pretty badly and then he realizes he needs to train to eventually beat the person who did indeed kill his best friend. On a more positive note, Goku's lap is very contagious and can only cause you to feel happy. Whether it is Goku's happiness over eating food, learning a new technique, beating a strong enemy, or just seeing his friends after a long time, he will not fail to make you happy. Akira Toriyama did an excellent job with conveying emotion in all the characters. Even characters who did not get major shine or importance had their own emotional moments. An example would be Upa, the Native American who wanted Goku to bring back his father. While it was not extremely important to the story, I believe it was a nice little addition to the story, which would the connection to in Dragon Ball GT, which some people may call it canon, some people may not. We're not going to get into that in this video. Lastly, let's talk about the characters in Dragon Ball. Every character had an impact in the story of Goku and the Dragon Balls, whether it's Bulma, who again is the second most important character in all of Dragon Ball, Krillin, Master Roshi, Tien, Chatsu, etc. All of them were crucial to the development of Goku. Krillin is Goku's best friend and always will be. Yes, I know I have said that Bulma is the second most important character, but that does not make them best friends. The dynamic between Goku and Bulma have always been a little brother and big sister. Without Bulma, Goku would have remained naive and honestly would have never pursued the Dragon Ball or met their friends along the journey. Master Rush was pivotal to making Goku go beyond his natural talent, developing his skills as a martial artist and instilling principles that will last him for a lifetime. Even the villains that Goku encounters play a role in his development. Goku has always shown mercy and compassion towards his enemies. Goku is one of the few characters who continues to try to understand why a person became a villain. Obviously during Dragon Ball Z, it is a bit different since some of the villains are strictly evil with no sad upbringing. OG Dragon Ball will have a special place in my heart since it was the anime that showed everyone's origin story. Seeing Goku grow up from being a kid to being a teenager was a beautiful journey to see. Also, seeing Goku and Chi Chi eventually develop their relationship and then we see at the end they do get married. The development of all the Z fighters during the anime was also great to witness because it ties into Dragon Ball Z. Let me know in the comments down below if you have watched OG Dragon Ball in entirety. What was your favorite moment and what is your favorite tournament? Make sure to leave a like and comment if you enjoyed the video. It is for free, of course. Have a good day and remember, move well, study well, play well, eat well, rest well. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Bugsy. And if you do want to support the channel a little bit more and watch these video essays two days early, make sure to click that join button and become a member to the channel. Have a fantastic day. Peace out. Also, rest in paradise, Akira Toriyama.